Ah. Uh, hello, everyone, and thanks for coming. Um, this talk is in no way rushed whatsoever, so <laughs> please excuse um, any slightly um, uncoordinated bits in this talk. We're just trying to figure out who's going to start this talk off, and it turns out it's probably me now, isn't it? Um, so, no. Oh, hello. Hi. So this, this, as as ever with the badge talk, we're starting out with a quote from John T that we entirely ignored. Um, so, this is Tilda Mark IV, or how we. I can't see my slides. Hang on. There we go. Or how we manufactured a replacement Nokia 3310 motherboard-ish. So, early 2017, we all went to Nottingham for a badge team meetup. Um, ostensibly, we were sorting out badges from the previous year, and we kind of, hang on, that slide's not gone on. Why's that slide not gone on? Hey, there we go. I'm gonna stand here so I can see. Early 2017, we had a badge team meetup, and we decided to give everyone a pager because we're stupid. Um, turns out the easiest way to give everyone a pager is to get some GSM modules. And if you're already giving people GSM modules, you kind of want to just make it into a mobile phone, and yeah, oops. Um, so, you know, that happened. So, we did a lot of software, and then we realized, oh, hang on, we've not done any hardware yet. Um, so we got to April this year, realized that, oh, we should probably design something so we can actually have a badge instead of some software. So <laughs> Matt quickly hacked this together. It kind of worked. Kind of worked. It, it mostly worked, didn't it? Yeah, EMF1 worked. It, it was square. We decided probably don't give things to people that are square. So, what do we have here? Next. So, this one we manufactured it. Took three minutes 30 to make, took half an hour to fix the machine again afterwards. We spoke to some of our sponsors. They said, can you make it look more like an end gauge and less like a 3310? So at this point, we were still kind of going for the replacement 3310 motherboard just to annoy Jonty. Uh, <laughs> So, this is the initial EMF2 prototype plan. We kind of went a bit more engagey with it. We essentially stole the design from the old, from the previous year's badge and modified it and, you know, went a bit more mobile phony. This is, so, um, Matt has other Matt. Primary mat, I don't know. Which one of you is mat A and mat B? That's a good point, okay. You get to be mat A. Do you want to talk about the EMF2 design thing, or? No? Yes. Yeah, yeah I can sit down. Um, yeah, mat B had done this nice square board that got us the schematic and the layout and all the pins and connections, and it was like, right, we need something that looks like a badge, and yes. Something looks like an N-gauge, and so this was Night Zero, and um, space bar. <coughs> this was Night Zero, Night One, Night Two, Night Three, yeah. <laughs> Four nights, solid nights of design work, um, and after about seven or eight nights, I finally got to, yeah, to that. Um, so yes, this was very rushed and quick. Um, Halfway through doing this, um, <clears throat> our sponsors TI turned around to us and said that um, the nice, simple, square, uh, modular Wi-Fi chip package would not be available because it's brand new silicon. They, haven't, they couldn't manufacture enough for us, so we had to go for the much more complex design, which is where I had to completely rearrange the board to get the Wi-Fi on. Um, <clears throat> Yes, so that was, we, 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 I, this was knocked out in about three weeks, and then we sent off and had five PCBs. You didn't get, did you get the PCB? No. We, we had five PCBs manufactured in the UK. I built them at home, 
on my desk with my tweezers and then put them on my oven on my hot plate to uh, cook the first ones hand built um, and then we were like the next two weeks we were testing uh, trying to write code to test all the bits of the hardware and then redesigned it and then it was uh, we f we did the f we got the final design done on the 29th of July uh, we uh, 29th of June I finally sent the final design over to China to start fabrication and then spent three weeks arguing about panelization and layout. Ask me about that afterwards. Um, so, some specs on the badge. So, a lot of Texas Instruments, huge thanks to them for all their support. Um, this year's the, the MSP, um, brand new processor from them, which we've ported MicroPython to with their help, and Kim will probably tell us lots about that. Um, but yes, we've crammed lots in there. The, the chip itself is a 128 pin chip. We used all 128 pins, plus a 16 pin port expander to connect all your buttons up. Um, and yes, it was, um, there, there are things on there. Some of you might have noticed the headset jack footprint in between the Grove headers. That was, a last th that was done in the last 30 minutes before we sent it to China. As, I think this might work. We'll test it when I get some boards. It didn't work, we didn't place it. Um, yeah. I'll talk a bit about that. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the MicroPython development. Um, one of the things that's interesting on that is the MSP 432. That was released uh, around about March this year. You'll note that we started working on it January last year. Uh, we'd worked with TI, had a great design. Unfortunately, then, in order for them to be able to sell it for sponsorship, we needed to work with their latest. Uh, API, which was a year after we started porting MicroPython. Thankfully, they did a port for us, so thank you so much for them. But we, uh, it did delay us. We, we, we planned ahead, but we're still delayed. Um, the NeoPixels, they work. They didn't work an hour before, we, uh, before John Z had his badge on stage. Uh, at least this time, it was just software. <laughs> um, I, 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 it's been fantastic doing MicroPython again because it's so, once again we've had so many people being able to uh, bring in apps and stuff and so I know we, 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 we've got a lot of badges out and I think Matt wants to talk a little bit about what we've been doing in terms of the App Store because most of the Python work is, 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 is Marek, sorry, not Matt. <laughs> so, Marek. Uh, is that already the next one? Yeah. Okay, so um, I kind of joined in after all the hardware is done because I have absolutely no clue about hardware. Um, so MicroPython means that everyone can just write a Python script and it runs on those batches. And we thought, yeah, we can probably improve on Last with App Store. We can improve the review process. So we moved everything to GitHub um, to just streamline the whole process. And so far it has, what was it, the last count? 43 PRs have been merged. And probably by the time I come back to the tent, there will be 20 new ones. Uh, so please keep it up. And thank you so much for all the work you've done so far. Um, I highlight a few of the apps that have made it into master so far, and I was going to run through them, and you can find all of them on the batch store, and you can install them, and then they will be yours. Um, so we have at least five different home screens. I've pictured three of them. Um, I've seen more um, when I was walking around yesterday, so if you made other ones, please push them, yes? Okay. Uh, we have, and I have no idea why, two different completely independent dating apps. Um, <laughs> They, they, someone has started work on these really early, and I have no idea where this is all coming from. Um, so thank you for that. Um, uh, we have, well, obvious, we have to have a snake, we have to have a breakout. Thanks for the person who made the breakout. Um, I'm sure there's quite a lot of improvements we can do to snake as well. I've heard of a snake too. Um, so we yeah, get on it. Uh, sound, so we have a speaker. Um, and this time, it's actually working reasonably well. So um, given that we also had 12 buttons, we had to make a synth with it as well. Um, as you can see, it's still very minimal, so please improve on it. Um, there's also another app, and I have no idea how it works, but it looks pretty. <laughs> um, also, there are some uh, random EMF-related apps, um, most notably one that tells you which beer is currently on, which is very important, uh, and one that gives you the current webcam view over the campsite. Uh, and there's lots of other like random arty stuff um, and I can just reiterate please push all your changes because other ones might be interested in sharing it yeah. 
at this point, John T. Right. Um, uh, building the badges is extremely hard, uh, obviously. Um, we, we can't do this without support of sponsors. It would be so ludicrously expensive to try and do this without, their, without the manufacturer's support in the first place. Um, this year, we've managed to keep it down to a, a smaller number of sponsors than usual because Texas Instruments have been so good to us, uh, along with HCD doing the assembly. And frankly, the, the fact that HCD did it again, we were a little bit surprised because it was such a pain last time, and then they volunteered to do it again. And like, you do remember what happened, don't you? you know, it's like, <laughs> But they're lovely, and they did, and it was actually worse this time, so I think maybe next time. <laughs> um, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, so MathWorks, again, supported us and were great. Private Internet Access were, were great. And then, but the majority of the sponsorship uh, that, that mattered for the badge in terms of, of hardware was Texas Instruments, HCD, Hologram, who gave, gave everyone the IoT SIM cards, which after you leave site, you can activate those, and they'll work anywhere in the world, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and Lone Microsystems, who did just a ludicrous amount of work for the GSM network. I, and they did it, we, we didn't really expect that. We were like, we, we kind of want to, we want to do a GSM network and we'll talk to, maybe, well, maybe we can cobble something together and we'll talk to them. And then they went, well, we'll just build you some base stations and we'll do all the things. And we were like, what? Why are you doing this? And they, we'll, we'll apply for the license from Ofcom and everything. And we were like, well, I, I don't understand why you're being so nice. Um, but, it's, but they were, they were wonderful. And um, we, we can't thank them enough. And everyone who's been involved in this, uh, sponsor wise they they 've been so good to us, and they 've dealt with the fact that we 're a little bit hard to work with sometimes um, <laughs> and uh, we 're hoping in the future we get to work with them again um, so thank you to all the sponsors. If any of the companies are here, um, I would actually like to meet you afterwards it 's been really great uh, and that, i mean that 's all I really need to say about the sponsorship it 's all worked quite well uh, i 'm going to hand off to Sam to actually talk about how the GSM network stuff was done, which is ludicrous so <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I have no slides really prepared. I think there's one that says GSM Network. It's, it's full of content. Um, and it goes, there we go. <laughs> but at least it's not a sponsor. So, yeah, um, I kind of had lunch with John T in March sometime. Um, and I bought him lunch, actually, I seem to remember. And then I ended up agreeing to do something. So um, <laughs> I don't quite know how that works, but surely you should have bought me lunch. Um, he he kind of said, I want to build a GSM network because I want to put GSM on the badge, but I don't want to tell anyone about it. Um, but if I'm going to give everybody a GSM badge, I need a network that will, in theory, cope with it, or at least not break Vodafone. Um, so our main aim was to try and build something that could support the badges and not cause problems uh, to the real world. Um, so we, yeah, as Lime Microsystems provided us some hardware, um, and some expertise and their little SDR radios. Um, I have a background in building networks. Um, I'm going to do some more talk about the actual network and how we did it in the uh, infra, the NOC uh, talk later. But really, just to touch a bit on the badge, I don't think, did you guys talk about any of the problems we've had with GSM? Yeah. Not yet. Shall I a little bit? Um, cool. So, uh, as you probably know, it hasn't worked particularly well with GSM. Um, because everything getting pushed out, we did finally kind of come to the, uh, the conclusion of what the problem seems to be. And this has a very uh, low-tech modification, which you may be able to see. But basically, uh, I've bent my antenna around 90 degrees. Um, <laughs> and what it seems to be was uh, the antenna on the board causing uh, interference with the buttons. And this is hardware that these guys know far more about than I do. But fundamentally, when the thing started transmitting, uh, GSM is a bit more sort of RF noisy than sort of Wi-Fi and things, and especially with these little antennas, um, like these devices. I, I, you know, I've worked in a carrier for a few, year, few years, and we had like labs of people testing phones. Even when Nokia would produce what you would think was a production-ready phone, we would spend six weeks with it in labs in like radio RF chambers, analyzing how it behaved with our network and stuff. Um, and we had like, Alistair had one on his desk at home. <laughs> so it was a slightly more lower budget uh, level of, of RF testing. But we've learned some stuff on that, I think. Um, the good news is there, I think there is a firmware fix which will improve things, which may be able to be updated to people, people to update their badges, which should reduce the problem. But actually bending your antenna a little bit, if you're careful, seems to help. So it's, it's hackable. Um, this one is actually on the GSM network. Um, so the GSM network has generally been working. Um, it's been patchy, but I've had a phone attached for most of the time, and I think I am here. I was literally rebooting the base station um, when I came inside the desk there. So. Sorry? Should we, should, we, should we chance a live demo of calling a badge? This is gonna, yeah, what, what, could, what could go wrong? It's...
I've answered. Uh, let me talk. I've got far too many microphones. Um, can somebody take that phone and talk? Hmm. Hello? 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 No, are there any talking, talking to phone? I'm not sure if the call's up, but anyway. It rang. Yeah. Uh, it rang and I answered the call. I think the call's still up. You can, you can hear me through there, can you? Yeah. Okay, I think maybe, maybe the... I, su I suspect I have the, um, the volume turned down on the badge somewhere, probably the speaker volume in the app. But um, yeah, building a phone is really hard, um, <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> well, I kind of knew this and still, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about the network and how we worked with the deck and all the kind of infrastructure stuff in the, uh, in the knock talk. But yeah, that's... Um, a few notes, you might have realized that we have a sign on the badge tent saying there are currently no badges, which is um, because yesterday when we were handing them out, so many people come, so many wanted a badges that we just emptied all our boxes and they were gone. Like, whoa, what happened? Um, so um, we had a much higher pickup of people who came and actually wanted uh, badges this year from um, 2016. Um, which kind of screwed our calculations. We also had a slightly higher failure rate on the batches we got out of production. So those two things combined um, led to a shortage. Um, we have managed to coax a few back into life and we will be um, starting handing a few of them. I'm not trying to get any hopes up too high here. A few of them out later on. Um, so regularly if you walk past a batch tent, like have a look whether we're open. We can't promise any current time strat now. Um, So a couple of things about the availability and, and, and why we have so few badges. Um, the failure rate this year has been uh, large, to, to put it to put it uh, politely. Um, this is a mix of things. Um, it was is not the assembly plant's fault in any way. Um, we were much later than we needed to be. They had to do a bit of a rush job to get it uh, done in time. Um, some of that is just things arriving from China really late. Uh, some of it is just component availability. Uh, some of it is the fact that half the components were on very small reels, so they had to patch all the reels together, and every time they did it, they had to cut some of the reel off which had components on it. So every single time they did this, we lost badges because we wouldn't have enough components to finish them. Um, and then we, it's, it's just been nightmarish. So our, I, I can't, what is our actual failure rate so far? I think we planned for like 15% and it was something quite a lot larger than that. Um, but also the badges were just so expensive to make this year, uh, we could not afford to make more than 2,500 and we've sold 2,500 tickets. Um, so we knew there was going to be a bit of a, uh, there would be a dropout on this, but normally we have about 70 to 80% 70 to pickup on the badge, badges anyway. So we were like, that'll be fine. What can possibly go wrong? And then everyone really wants bad phones. So it's... <laughs> It, it, yeah, it, it just hasn't worked out quite how we expected. Um, and, and it never does. And this whole event has not worked out how we expected. So, But everyone seems to say it isn't bad. So that's good. Um, other than that, we, ha we are going to repair badges. We're going to try and get as many made as we can. Um, we are going to do a second run of the badges. Um, but we're, we've, with the remaining components that we have and the remaining boards, we're going to do another 250 or so, which hopefully should be enough for everyone who didn't get one that really wants one. Um, and I had a chat to Ian Softly, the director of Hackers, earlier on. And um, he is going to be very lovely, and he's going to autograph all of the broken badges. So if you would like an autographed badge uh, by Ian Softly, uh, we will be able to provide you those as well, which makes it probably more valuable than uh, the badges anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, and we, we will swap those for a working one if you want. So, um, but you know, I, I think I want a broken one more than a working one now. So, you know, so uh, yeah, we're, we're going to do our best to after the event to deal with this, but we are all going to be pretty broken for about the next month. And we have a, a history of, we'll do this like in the weeks after the event, and it never happens. And I guarantee it will not happen a few weeks after the event. So in probably October time, we'll deal with this, and we'll make sure everyone gets badges that wants them. Um, so I hope everyone's understanding about that. It's mostly out of our control. It was just down to manufacturing problems. Uh, 2016 badges, what do we need to talk about? Well, you can do that. We have 125-ish 2016 badges, which are for sale, if you want one from 2016. They work, they work yes. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the NeoPixels. <laughs> um, uh, where are we selling them? Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah, so later this afternoon, um, come to the badge tent, uh, first come, first serve. We, 30 pounds? Yeah, 30 pounds cash only. I'm just going to note that the cashback is now working in the bar again after someone has stopped DDoSing our network. So yes, you are now able to get cash to buy a badge. Uh, is that everything we need to talk about? Should we go to Q&A? Oh, there's Mark. I would like to give a big shout out to all the volunteers we had in the batch tent. Could you all please stand up if you're in here? Um. And Amy for doing the booklet, which looks amazing. Um, Everything was last minute, everything was a bit rushed, there were people who are not quite happy. You all did it with very well, and I can't funk you enough. So, um, questions? Questions? When are we going? When again, I think I'll speak slowly, it might work better. <laughs> when are we going to do all this again and where? Because uh, okay, so when are we going to do this again and where? Uh, do you mean just the badge or the whole event? <laughs> the whole thing? Uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, the answer is never, and I'm going to retire. So, you know, no, no, no. We, we, EMF will be continuing, don't worry. Um, but we'll talk about that in the closing ceremony. Um, so, if we can constrain to badge questions, that would be easier for now. Um, are there any other qu badge questions coming from the, from the audience? There's one there, and there is one there, and one here. First one. Hey. Um, I was wondering what's the best thing you've seen someone do with a badge, either a previous one or this year, or. What's the most inventive or uses the most components out of one? Yeah, so, I, yeah, so someone in, in 2016 wrote a, a geolocation app that figured out where, based on access point IDs and signal strength, uh, triangulated your position. Oh, yeah, th this gen <laughs> Alistair again. Stop being so good. <laughs> um, uh, triangulated where you were on site and then would show you the now and next talks in the right stage. All right, so someone took your app and they made it even better. So, you know, it's shoulders are giants and all that. Um, and then also the person who won the competition last year, James, is James here? Floppy, is he around? Um, he wrote a complete 3D renderer for the badge, which was amazing. That was really cool. And he did it in a day in Python. And it's been ported. Yeah, so there is a working 3D renderer, which is kind of cool. Um, and then in 2014, someone wrote an entire operating system, uh, which was kind of amazing. And they just emailed it to me a zip file. <laughs> it was, oh, it's on GitHub now. There you go. You see, he's here as well. Um, uh, and I can't remember what else has happened. I'm pretty impressed with the dating apps. That's kind of cool. The, yeah, the dating apps are cool if a bit creepy. Um, <laughs> We would like to know who the people are who've written those. So if you can come say hi, that'd be great. Because, I, I mean, how serious are you? We need to know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, more questions? Oh. What, fe what features have you always really wanted for the badge but haven't been able to do? Which of those do you think might happen in 2020? Assuming it was going to be in 2020. Uh, the, the feature we would really like to add for 2020 is it working at the beginning of the event. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, on, honestly, I, I don't know. We, we would need to talk about it. Like The GSM thing was kind of aiming a little bit high. Um, the fact that it, we pulled it off at all is remarkable. Um, Oh, there's been talk of GPS every single time. There's been e-paper several times, which I we're not doing e-paper. 
It, it just breaks really easily. It's a, it's a terrible idea for a badge. I'd like to do an FPGA, but it's not accessible. Uh, yeah. yeah, an FPGA has been talked about. I, we don't know. Um, ideas very much welcome, actually. We're looking for ideas for the next badge. And the next badge, I think we're probably going to go quite a lot simpler and hopefully with a sort of a bit of a theme to it that works solidly, mostly so we can actually finish it on time. <laughs> yeah, but then I got excited. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I think maybe I need to not be involved. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, other questions? Yeah, it kind of follows on from that. Um, how about a badge hackathon about scheduled for about two months before EMF camp, so everyone who's interested in getting interesting apps going in advance, and that gives you two months extra deadline slack Somebody wanted to me. for getting the badge working anyway. Two, two months before I was still designing the P yeah. Two months ago, I was still designing the PCB. We had maybe two prototypes in existence. Um, yeah. So. Did you find your prototype? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a green EMF prototype in the badge tent uh, on the help desk, and it's disappeared. I think someone's walked away with it. I would like it back, please. It's only one of two in existence. <laughs> um, more questions, I think? Uh, just as a follow-on from that, we, we, we are going to try and do stuff earlier. And we really, one of the things, actually, to, talking features, we would love to have uh, a development environment that emulates the badge before the, before the, work, before the site. Um, we would, thought we might find, manage to do that this time, but so much stuff changed late on, it, it didn't happen. Um, if anyone would like to work with us on that, that would be super cool. We are likely to stick with MicroPython. Um, so if anyone would like to help build a badge emulator, that would be amazing. It would really help with this for the future. Uh, and I'm, so, I'm sure one of you wants to do this, but it's <laughs> perhaps the person who wrote the operating system. Um, <laughs> uh, more questions? Hi, can we get touch screen next time? Can you say that again? We didn't hear it. Can we get a touch screen next time? So, so the 2016 badge uh, came with the non-touchscreen, and you can actually get the touchscreen version and put it on there. Um, and we did actually, up until we ran out of pins and I needed to steal them back, have we did allocate the touchscreen pins on this badge. Um, but we'd put so many buttons on there um, and so many other things. I just needed the four. It takes another four pins to ADC, so we had to pull that off. And I like the buttons. The, the, the square buttons. This is one of the one of our, one of our fantastic support from the uh, Shenzhen sources. Uh, the, those square buttons. I'd originally found them at 28 p a button, um, which would have made them about three pound fifty per badge for buttons. And the Shenzhen sourcer got it down to 74 p, which you've got while well, you've got these nice square red, um, soft buttons rather than the cheap tacky sw tack switches. Uh, Norbert from Allnet. Yeah, Allnet. Yeah. Just a massive shout out to, to Norbert from allnet.de. They, they're a Shenzhen component sourcer, and they, have, they, they did the, the badge for Shah, the camp in the Netherlands uh, last year as well. Um, they've been incredible. We basically just email and you're like, we want these weird things, and then he makes it happen. And my favorite thing was like stuff being run around in taxis in Shenzhen to make sure it got shipped in time and things like that. They're, they're so good. But it, it's... Um, it, I, I ended up in Shenzhen by accident earlier in the year, and just for a couple of days. And uh, I went out there and I was like, maybe I can do some stuff for the badge. And I got there and I was like, oh, wow, that was naive. <laughs> um, so, um, it is infeasible to do anything there without having someone on the ground, and they are amazing. If you want to make, get any ele electronics made, we cannot recommend them enough. Um, they can also sort out PCB production and all sorts of things. They, they've been wonderful to us. Um, and they, they basically have just done it for us because they wanted to. They were so nice. Um, uh, it was allnet.de, I think. I, I, uh, yeah, and you want Norbert, he is wonderful. Uh, tell him that we say hi. So, um, yeah. Um, one of the fun ones on that is, has anyone tried to buy capac surface mount capacitors lately? There's a global shortage. Yeah, us trying to source the, the sheer amount of capacitors we needed would have been impossible without someone in Shenzhen who was able to go and you know walk down the street and get them from three different vendors. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. More questions? You've given us lots of things to work with on this badge. Thank you very much. Um, have you seen any shitty add-ons for it yet? You put, you put the shitty add-on connector, but um, I haven't seen I've any so I've, far. I've not seen anyone do anything with that. That was a last-minute thing. It was like, again, it was like there was a tweet on the day I was about to send the designs off to China. And someone tweeted at me and says, is there going to be this connector on there? And it was like, 
And Johnny was like, can we fit this connector on? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Actually, at the time, I think I was in a van on the way to Manchester to collect a vending machine uh, for Nottingham House Patient. It was like, uh, I'm trying to panelise this and add this connector on the yeah, there's, there's a new version, isn't there? There's a sh there's SAO2 or something with extra oh, pins. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Someone make an adapter. It's the same pin. We haven't actually implemented any of the software side of shitty add-ons, so someone else needs to do that. But yeah, so it's I2C, but you'll have to do all of the actual protocol thing for, but the, the, the pin out hasn't changed between version one and two, so you can make it work. Got time for one more very quick question, if anyone's got one. No, we all good? Excellent. Oh, right over there, quick, 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 fast. And it better be a question, not a comment. <laughs> um, you said you did want a Nokia 3310 clone this year. What would you not like next year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, possibly just not a badge at all because then we'd have to do all the work so it is, yeah we, we don't know really um, oh it's, it's really hard to say I, th I think we, there's been so much gone into this this team has been incredible they've worked really really hard for a very long time um, I, I full credit to Matt as well for frankly not sleeping for like two weeks to get the PCB design done and I, I think we need to yeah, oh yeah, I, we forgot to mention that. There was a problem with the PCB production and I woke up at about sort of like half past nine in the morning and got to my email and there was an email from HCD, Gene at HCD, who's wonderful, just going, somebody needs to be here at the production plant today within the next few hours or this isn't happening. And Matt, who lives in Nottingham, got, just ran out of the house, got on a train and went straight there and was there all day to sort it out. And it, that's, it's been that kind of operation the entire time. It's just been frantic. So like with many things in this event, the fact that it's happened at all is kind of remarkable. So uh, yeah, full credit to everyone. Um, I don't think we've got time for any more questions, but can we get a round of applause for the badge team? And We, we have a lot more stories about this badge, um, some of which we rather weren't recorded. So um, uh, if you want to hear them, pop by the bar later on and find us and we'll be able to tell you all sorts of things that happened. It's been, it's been emotional. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy playing with them over the next year. We are going to keep shipping firmware updates to them. Uh, all, of, all of it will be going into upstream MicroPython as well. Um, TI is doing loads of great work for that. So hopefully, for the next camp, we will have the GSM network again, I suspect, uh, and you can bring them all back, and they will work flawlessly in, in theory. Um, <laughs> but we say that about the badges every time, so who knows. Anyway, thank you all for coming, um, and we'll see you around site. Yeah.